from that, we're quickly going to mention this regarding E1. So I've long said, and I've been on record of saying that I've enjoyed some of the times that I've had at E1, but I'm also very aware that E1 might be one of the best and worst clubs in London. Um, it might have kind of replaced Fabric in that respect because Fabric's just like, it's a lost cause by now, right? It's not really even worth going to as a punter. I'm sure as a DJ, it's a better experience because I've, you know, like I said before, I had the the I had, I had the pleasure once time to kind of be in a green room at Fabric a couple of times and it was actually quite fun, I'm not going to lie, um, to be in there with all the fucking heads and shit, you know, um, um, you know, whatever they're doing in there, having a good time, that was kind of great. I happened to fucking bump into Ricardo Villalobos one time over there as well, that was pretty chill um, and blah, no, I think I might have saw Miss Kitten as well there um but anyway that aside fabric as a rave is a lost cause unless it's room two no problem not probably even bothering with that place right but then of course there's places like fucking e1 that exist that have some of the best lineups that you're ever going to see in london but the club is a failed state the club is a failed fucking club the security the layout the fucking lack of air conditioning like the the expensive drinks the lack of cold drinks is horrendous like legitimately it's so warm in there i'm starting to wonder now whether they actually do have a functioning fridge it's just so fucking warm the temperatures are so fucking high that even when you grab your fucking by the time the 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 bartender has given you your tin of beer and you've got your fucking change or you've you know paid your fucking bill and you head back to your friends your fucking beer becomes hot chocolate it's absolutely crazy man it's nuts how quickly your drinks warm up especially if you're holding in your hand or your pocket body heat whatever it may be there's no way to get around it it's an awful fucking venue but as you can see from the lineups here on the screen they're absolutely incredible right you've got labyrinth here that's an amazing lineup you've got this great um 10 years of uh what's it what, what's that fucking label called Oh, I forgot the fucking name, but you see the, the lineup here. You got Kobosi playing, Kanda, Inverifu, Frank, Aiden, Afi Psycho. Like, absolutely incredible lineup, right? Let's just click that actually. Let's, what's that one? Um, let's see if it kind of loads up on here. Yeah. Um, 10 years of the R label group, right? And all these tickets are probably already sold out, right? They've only got VIP ones left over there. Um, fourth release ticket, 25 pounds. So they do absolutely great stuff, right? You see that one right there? 10 years of fucking R label, absolutely banging lineup. Of course, anybody would want to go to a party like that. So you see how that is great. You got a more grab event happening, happening there. You've got grounded, which might be one of the best ones they've done for a while, right? You've got Rod Had, Henning Bear, uh, B for Me, D Dan, Hyperactivist, Nini H, like all the people that I absolutely love DJ wise are playing in one place. You got Mix Mag 40th anniversary there, Overmoon, Bitter Babe, Fold playing, Lofa low low um flynn you've got e1 event happening with the ai hate models antonio de angelis de harma ikata pablo buzi playing like incredible lineups but the club is hot look you got e1 presents hector oats carmen electro um all these people that i've kind of discovered actually through whore actually you know that's crazy i think every person here with the exception of maybe donna and samantha togni i've discovered on whore hector oats carmen electro um patrick mason oh man like i know they're going through a bit of trouble at the moment but they they did put a lot of people on the map i don't think anybody would have probably don't get me wrong some of these people patrick mason being a good example would have probably made it eventually regardless right they, they're just so charismatic so much of a star that they they always had it right it's just a matter of time before they made it but I would have never known of Hector Oaks if it wasn't for Hoare. I swear to God, he probably was doing mad stuff before I found out about him on Hoare, but that platform definitely deserves some respect for that one. Obviously not some respect for fucking, you know, being fucking um, Zionist sympathizers, but apart from that, they deserve a lot of respect. Um, then you've got the Teletech event happening with Anita, Solomon, Tekra playing. Uh, you've got a Labyrinth event here happening, which I'm not really too bothered about. Fuck them. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You've got Electra, Charlie Sparks. Uh, you got a neat sixth birthday party from E1, DVS1, Dax J, Maron. Like, you got Percolate happening, the New Year's Day event, which is Helena Half playing all night long. That's going to be fucking crazy. You got per another Percolate event happening on New Year's Eve. So, two, oh, so you got back to back Percolate events. You got, they got um, a New Year's Eve one uh, featuring Ban Bernoulli, uh, Jab Job Josie, um, Leon, Leon Vinehall, Midland. Knicks and then you got Helen the Half there, blah, blah blah. Anyway, you know what I'm I'm saying, right? Amazing lineups, but I swear to God, the club is a failed state. So my, my question when it comes to E1 is this: 
I recently remember somebody telling me a story where I might, would I ever got told a story? I saw it on, on a group chat. It's weird how that happens. When you don't speak to people in real life, you start to read group chats and think they're actually real stories that somebody told you, a real human told you. And actually you read it on your screen. Ha <laughs> ha. But anyway, I think I read it on my screen and I saw somebody mention a story where they were at E1 and for some reason, when they were leaving, all the security guards at E1 made people unlock their phones and they were searching their phones and shit. And I guess the idea behind it was that somebody, maybe in the staff, make sense, maybe part of the security team had their phone stolen. So they were making sure that everybody that was leaving, no, they were checking to see if somebody had a phone that they couldn't unlock, you know? And if they couldn't unlock it, then obviously it was that security guard's phone. Then they'll beat you up or they'll fucking arrest you and shit, right? But just imagine that. It's not really your problem anyway. So they're asking you to fucking unlock their phone or by force or intimidation so that they can kind of find out who stole whose ever phone it was in this space. So obviously that happens quite often there. A lot of pickpockets in there for some odd reason. Obviously there's loads of guys out there selling fucking balloons, which is usually, I think, a sign of a failed club. When there's guys out there pitched up outside of your club selling balloons, it's usually a sign that you probably got the wrong type of crowd, especially for me anyway. It's not for me. For some people it is, it's not for me. When I hear that, I know for sure, you know, I probably shouldn't be here any longer than what I am there for. So that's something that you probably have to kind of figure out but all that being said they clearly are doing something right with the fucking lineups right they really are doing something right like you think about this more grab event that features fucking more grab tommy Hulahan, clouds and loud like this is going to be absolutely booming with people right it's going to be absolutely full it's going to be crazy it's going to be absolutely nuts and all over the place so clearly they're doing a good job they know what they're doing when it comes to the bookings they've got the right people in charge you know even stuff like the grounded event and the people that are playing on there you have to be a bit of a head and have your your, your kind of ear to the ground to kind of know who to book in these sort of places in these sort of rooms so it makes sense that they're doing the things the way they're doing them right so it kind of all that makes sense and obviously maybe i'm just somebody that's kind of hating from the outside who knows but then I'm thinking as a raver, maybe it comes to a point where you have to kind of accept the places for what they are and just try and make the best out of it. But unfortunately for me, I'm so much of a vibes person, so much of a, you know, feeling orientated person. When I'm in a space and I don't really feel it, there's no way that I can kind of turn it around. And I've used an example all the time when I talk about feelings and vibes and shit where, you know, there's been plenty of times where I've kind of been with the right group of people in a really shitty bar like a Weatherspoons and I've had a great time. And that is evidence for me that the vibe that I have or the vibe that I'm bringing with my crew is way more important than the people in there because by default, who would really want to spend their free time in the Weatherspoons? So the fact that you can go there and have a good time is proof that actually it's important to have good people and a good community around you. But unfortunately with E1, the way it is, the location, the size of it it's just too big of a club to it to make sense for it not to be this way because it's a it's, it's one of the interesting places because it's sort of like kind of i wouldn't say it's in the center of london but it's a place that's easily easy to get to if you live south like it's probably the easiest one if you live south maybe it would exception to folds because folds got the fucking um elizabeth line i think and no sorry the overground and shit that can go to um um what you call it um somewhere around south i've got kind of woods and stuff so maybe that makes it a bit easy but probably only fold and e1 are two of the only clubs in east london or central east london where you can kind of get to from every part of london so maybe that's the reason why it's also really rampant and generally they have a very international booking policy so you know a lot of the spanish come out a lot of the french come out a lot of the italians come out and all the best in between to see their favorite dj play so i understand this but for me personally i've had so many you know up and down times in there it just really makes me think like should i really be you know spending quote unquote wasting more money going to a club where i don't necessarily have the greatest of time knowing full well that it's not really about me and it's not really about the person playing and it's not really about the event itself it's just more so about the people that go there that are going to dictate whether or not i have a good night and you know as much as you're complaining is one thing it's also kind of beneficial as an adult to just think you know what accept people and places for what they are and if they don't serve your purpose or they don't serve your needs just move on and accept the l because you know as great as this lineup is the sixth birthday party right nine you got you got the 999 guy dax j maron um blasher and um sorry um balsher and alt uh theo nasa playing there um anthony DeAngelis. you know what i mean like it's obviously sick but do you really want to be in E1 in the beginning of the new year, like surrounded by absolute delinquents, like trying to make sense of your life and stuff, really? Like, do you really want to be at a teletech event in E1? Like, could you imagine 
to like ever again like for tele tech events i've been to a couple that have been great but then they're also you know mostly great because i just go in there like you know wanting to fucking bury my head in fucking as much <laughs> stuff as possible so maybe in some occasions when you're in these type of places and you're not in the right mood and then you bump into one or two you know dicey people on the way to the toilets it completely shifts the way you kind of view the event so i don't know i don't know where i'm at with this but it's just kind of a, an and what you call it it's just a more so an observation and acknowledgement of just how fucking up and down this place is as a place to visit and it's somewhere that i'm kind of needing to keep my eye open on and realize that maybe i have to just accept it for what it is make the best of it and kind of move on who knows who bloody knows